President Putin using force against a sovereign state is rejected and Russia will help Syria against aggression. Larijani, the only way for settling the crisis in Syria is political. Syrian Arab army units enter the center of Ma'lula and continue to chase terrorists in several areas in the city. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Yerado Krikorian with the news in English. Russia's President Vladimir Putin stressed Russia's rejection to aggression against Syria and all that might aggravate the crisis there, vowing more support in case of a potential military strike. Putin was speaking during a press conference at the conclusion of the G20 summit held in the Russian city of St. Petersburg. He added that a military action cannot be categorized as self-defense, referring that since it is outside the Security Council's mandate, the outcomes of our talks mean that those who want to take matters within their own hands are bypassing international law. Putin said that Russia has discussed the situation in Syria at length during the G20 summit, pointing out that Russia, China, India and Indonesia, the largest Muslim country, has opposed the strike and so have Argentina, Brazil, South Africa and Italy. <laughs> Syria's permanent representative to the UN, Dr. Bashar Jafari, said that Syria is against weapons of mass destruction and that it will not declare war on anyone, but it will defend itself if war is declared upon it. He pointed out that the division in the U.S. Senate shows that there is an opposition against launching the war, adding that the U.S. administration only managed to get 17 votes in favor out of the hundreds of Congress members, showing that there is intense debate on this issue there. Speaking to the Syrian TV by phone, Al Jafari said that Syria, as a founding member of the United Nations, is fully committed to the UN Charter and international law and does not intend to go to war with the US or any other country. The Russian president's spokesman, Dmitry Peskov, said that the Russian stance is very simple and straightforward as it supports the supremacy of international law. Peskov added in an interview with Russia Today TV that it is a necessity for everyone to stick to the rules and principles of international law, which stipulates that the only body that can make use of force against any country legitimately is the United Nations Security Council. He went on to say that the U.S intentions to launch an aggression on Syria have not been met with a popular support, nor have the U.S. allies supported that, which represents the severe division in the camp willing to launch the strike. Peskov pointed out that any military action against Syria would lead to a devastating consequences and instability in the whole region. As other states, Russia strongly rejects the use of weapons of mass destruction and calls for waiting for the UN missions report to be issued as the evidence provided by the U.S. about that is not sufficient. A Russian Navy source announced that the Russian landing ship Nikolai Filchenkov of the Russian Black Sea Fleet will leave Sevastopol for the Syrian coast to carry out its mission there. The source said that the vessel will dock in Novorossiysk port first where it will take special cargo on board and head to the designated area of military service in eastern the Mediterranean. The same sources pointed out that Semet Levy, the guarding ship of the Russian Black Sea Fleet, will head towards the Syrian coast too on the 12th of September within the Russian operational naval formation in the Mediterranean. German Foreign Minister Guido Westverwelle expressed rejection of the stances of the countries which call for a military intervention in Syria, calling for waiting for the outcome of the UN experts on chemical weapons. 
Bestevelle said during a meeting for EU foreign ministers in the Lithuanian capital, Vilnius, that Germany sees that it is necessary to wait for the report of the UN experts of chemical weapons before adopting any decisions or any possible measures of military nature. He added that Germany is holding close and extraordinary talks with Russia for achieving progress on the diplomatic track. Meanwhile, Austrian Secretary of State for Foreign Affairs renewed the stand of his country, which rejects launching any aggression against Syria. A response to Pope of Vatican Francis' initiative on a fasting and prayer day for restoring security and peace to Syria and in rejection of any military intervention against it, a fasting and prayer day started in the whole countries of the world. Pope Francis will head a four-hour mass vigil night at St. Peter's Square and speak briefly in between long moments of silence and recitals of invocations for peace. Last week, Pope Francis urged both Catholics and non-Catholics and those who are affiliated to other religions and all men of goodwill to join a day of fasting and prayer for peace. Speaker of the Iranian Shura Council, Ali Larijani, reiterated that the only way to resolve this crisis in Syria is by resorting to a political solution, affirming that reforms cannot be achieved by force. In a speech at the Turkmenistan parliament, Larijani said that there are more than 10,000 terrorists from several countries in Syria and that immense military resources have been put at their disposal, repeating the mistake made in Afghanistan. He asserted the Western intelligence agencies are involved in creating extremist movements, thinking that they can benefit from them tactically, but they were quite mistaken. back. Army units destroyed terrorists' weapon and ammunition caches and killed many terrorists and injured others in several towns and villages in Daraa. A military source said that terrorist gatherings and dens were destroyed on Asad al Mukhayyam Road and near the meteorological center in the city of Daraa. The source added that army units destroyed terrorists' weapon caches in Daraa al Balad and Al Haraq village and they also killed all members of armed terrorist groups in the towns and villages of Ali Aduda, Inkhil, and Nuaime, Atman, and the surrounding area of Al Hamza Mosque in Nawa City. Syrian Arab army units entered the center of Malula city and continued to clear it of terrorist groups. Earlier, a military source said that terrorist gatherings were destroyed near the roundabout of Safir Malula Hotel and in Wadi Salib and the roundabout of Marsir Kis. The army destroyed a mortar and thermal rockets. The source added that units of the armed forces destroyed terrorist hideouts and gatherings in Khan Sheikh, Drusha, Mughar al Mir. Kuwa is the yacht on Khan Danun Road in Damascus countryside, killing and injuring a number of them. Finally, in al Rahibe, Damascus countryside, an army unit ambushed an armed terrorist group killing scores of Saudi terrorists and confiscating their weapons. Among them was terrorist Mohammed Idris. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. Now to latest business and market news with Nariman Qassam, but after a short break. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. The Minister of Economy and Foreign Trade, Dr. Khadr al orfali asserted that the Ministry is ready to support the industrialists to overcome the obstacles that are facing the production process, especially during the current crisis. The Minister also pointed out to the active role of the Industry Chambers Union by providing the citizens with the basic needs, in addition to supporting the national economy.
On the other hand, the chairman of the Industry Chambers Union said that the union will cooperate with the Ministry of Economy and other ministries to overcome the obstacles that are facing the national economy. The Minister of Agriculture, Ahmed Al Qadri, asserted that there are about 420,000 tons of fodder in the general establishment of fodder. The Minister also indicated that the establishment's plan aims at stabilizing the fodder prices in the local markets as the Directorate of Animal Production and the General Commission for Scientific Agricultural Research are working on their part on improving the local breeds. The Ministry of Agriculture affirmed that the cotton crop for this season is good, as the Manager of Production Department in the Ministry said that the climate conditions for this season was helpful, noting that the Agricultural Directorates are working to, est to estimate the production in the governorates. U.S. crude oil rose to a two-year high as Brent settled up 86 cents to reach 116 US dollars a barrel. US crude oil for October delivery settled up 2.0% to reach 110 US dollars a barrel. European stocks rose to a three-week high, completing their biggest weekly gain since April, as investors bet that any tapering of Federal Reserve stimulus will be more gradual than previously anticipated. Gold ended the week by 0.5% lower for a second consecutive weekly loss. Spot gold was up 1.5% to reach 100, sorry, 1,387 US dollars an ounce. The U.S. dollar fell from a seven-week high against the euro and the yen uh, on speculations that the Federal Reserve will trim the pace of its 85 billion U.S. dollars in a monthly bond purchases this month. Ladies and gentlemen, this was our economic news for today. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.